Hi there, I'm Thack. Welcome. Today we are building a bowl holder, skulls and crosses being the icons and themes of the day. So I went out to a thrift shop and I picked up this bowl and basically what I'm looking to do is create something that kind of holds it in a chalice-like way. So went through my stuff. I've got a back room there with shelves that have miscellaneous pieces on. If I was English, I would call them odds and sods. It's me odds and sods pile and I'm putting it all together and making this little project. So if I was English, I would talk like that, but I am not. So I'm gonna just talk the way I do. So anyway, I got this bowl, $5.99 at a thrift shop. So pretty economical, but it's still a pretty cool piece of glass. And with that, I also found some laser cut crosses that I had for a railing that I did last year. And I've got a whole box of these left and I'm trying to figure out something to do with them. They're pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is grind some texture into these and these are gonna become our crosses. Also, I, when I teach, I'm always demonstrating the skull. People like the skull, so I, I demonstrate forging the skull, which you probably saw in our last video, which is part of this series. So anyway, here's the skull that I forged in the last video here, along with a handful of others that I've got here that I've cut off, and they are gonna become the skulls and crosses. Let me just quickly kind of walk you through this. The magic of video, I've already gone ahead and I've formed some of my crosses here. I've ground some texture into them, and now I've curved them. They are going to be forming onto the bowl, something like that with a skull in between each one and so on around the circle there. In addition to that, when I was going through my pile of stuff, I was trying to figure out how this is all gonna to come together. So I got this here and I think this will come off maybe the bottom of the bowl somehow, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. It's all fairly fluid in my head at this point, but something maybe like that and then I've got this other one coming down here, and then I found these funky things, which I think are pretty cool. Let's see if I lay it out here, and if my camera is going to capture it. So I've got these cutouts here. I actually don't know what they were for. I don't know where they came from, but here they are, and I think what I'll do is do some forge texture on this, but I've got this cool little snowflake here, and if I set this half hemisphere into there, and then the other piece would come up onto there, makes kind of a funky base. In addition to that, also, again, just what I've got laying around here, I've got these little tiny hemispheres, and I think maybe I could fake rivet head this whole perimeter here. Just spitball in here, not sure if this is the way it's all gonna play out. I also got these holes here. They might lend themselves to a forward spike. If I wanna add some real visual interest to this thing, make it dynamic, and also the whole the juxtaposition of having skulls and crosses, you know, it's, it, that's kind of an um, interesting juxtaposition or dynamic that I like there. And I think if I was to start a Guns N' Roses cover band, maybe I would call it Skulls and Crosses, but uh, that remains to be seen. Anyway, it's on the table. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is grind the texture into this and start shaping up some crosses. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my cross heated up now and I'm going into my 20 pound swage block, a Newman block, which I sell on my site. And I'm using a wooden mallet because I want to curve these pieces, but using a steel hammer would smash up the detailing that we've put in there. By going in with a wooden mallet, even into a steel bowl, I nullify that effect. I don't really have too much of that sort of damage. So what I want to do now is just dish this out and that gives me about the right curvature for my bowl. So that is the first step. And now I need to flip this around, heat up the back end there and curve out the other side and give it that S curve. Okay. Now I'm putting the S bend in there and now what I need to do is bend the T on the bottom and with that I'm using the cross pin on my steel hammer and just using the spoon form here it just happens to be on the same side and it looks like it's about the right curvature 
So this is a fairly thick and short piece. I need to get in with some leverage, so the spoon form is a good shape for that and coming in with the cross peen, I'm dinting it up here. A lot of texture is happening there, but on the other side, not so much. So this should give me the right shape for when it comes around the bottom of my bowl there. I want these pieces coming together like that. So that's what I am trying to achieve. I'm gonna start welding my components together, the skulls and crosses anyway, and I've got my bottom hemisphere, which is going to be sitting like that. So now I just have to jig this thing off the table. So I'm just gonna shut my mouth. We're gonna probably fast motion through all this. It's gonna take a little bit. Here we go. Well, that was awkward. Not really having a real hard and fast game plan when I set out on this and using what we call found objects, meaning they were, I didn't custom make them for this particular piece. It's just kind of working with what I got. And this being such a bizarre shape, wasn't really sure where I was going until I started laying it out. Now, I like doing that. I like flying by the seat of my pants and I, I like to design just completely off the cuff like that. I have a lot of fun with it, but you can really kind of screw yourself sometimes. In this case, everything seemed to work out, but it's different than that I was first expecting. Anyway, I was gonna do it with a hemisphere, decided the way with the clearance there that a ball might look better. To me, it's got more of a Vatican sort of papal look to it now with that ball in there. Move to that. Also realized with my spacing and stuff, it was getting too tall to hold it to have the skulls touching on either side there. So what I ended up doing is, is cutting inch and five eighths spacer pieces out of five sixteenths round bar to actually space this whole thing out. So now I've got my rough bowl there and it's still got a couple of anomalies that I think I'm gonna go get this all welded solid and get it heated up and just kind of move a couple of those pieces. Then what I'm going to do is grind a little scoop out, like a 5 16 radius there, so that I can plop these skulls in and I can then pick um, what their orientation is if I want them pointing straight down, which was my initial thought, but you won't really be able to see them from standing level, but I don't really want to have them up too high either. So I'm gonna have to play with that, see how it comes out. It's all very exciting as this unfolds. So I'm gonna weld these in solid here now and then get some heat on here and try to even out some of the anomalies and then we can move on to the base. Okay, so here is our base, the pieces that I've got arbitrarily. So I'm gonna make that into the base. What I wanna do is throw them into the forge and get texture all the way around, even into this crevice here where it comes together, just so that it has the same forged texture as everything else. Also, these holes are just begging for something and I think a spike is what we need. So I'm gonna be taking some half inch round bar and forging a nice faceted spike on here. I really wanna goth this thing up. And while we're at it, adding spikes, I think what we need to do is forge some square bar here and into here and put some spikes coming out of the crosses too. We just need to add a little more viciousness to this piece. It's looking a little benign. So let's forge some spikes and stuff. A square spike starting with half inch square bar and I'm just forging a taper, square taper, just over an inch long. I'm not gonna bring it out to a full point that's just problematic. And I think I'm just gonna tap the edges ever so slightly. Straighten everything out. That's it. Simple as that. Just make four more of those. And the round spike, same thing. Starting with a square taper. Bring that to a dull point. Now I'm gonna put it on edge and knock those corners down. In essence, creating a descending octagon shape. And then I just knock the corners off the corners and that creates our cone spike. This one I might have got a little bit sharp on. I don't think this piece is going to be toddler friendly. I'm just saying that right now. 
So just using a medium weight ball peen because I'm going to be getting into some radiuses here. I'm just coming in at a 45. I want these seams to come together with a little bit of a V groove there. I think would be groovy. Sorry. Now coming in with the actual peen here and just putting a 45 in there. Switch around. Some texture on this whole thing. So basically just knocking that edge onto a 45 there. I think I'm just going to try, I don't know how well this is going to work, but I would like to get a slight bulge so that it's just slightly bulging into the spike. I think that's pretty subtle, but it might make the difference sell nicely. So I just got to do the other, however many of those guys there is, and then we can start assembly. And here we are. All the pieces are now prepped and we are ready for assembly. So I am going to shut my mouth and just start tacking this together with a little MIG. I think it's all self-explanatory. Here we go. And there we have it, all welded together now and roughly ground, so it's all in position here. A little wobble on there that I'm going to bang out yet, and I want to get my die grinder, which is noisy and annoying, and you guys don't need to see that. I just want to get in with die grinder and clean up some of the little ugly spots where I had a big opening down here, and I want to clean up some of the wells also up in here. Uh, just give it a once over with the die grinder, maybe the bench file as well. And then I'm going to do an oil rub bronze finish on this. I'd like to do a faux finish, um, something that's going to pull out the highlights. We've got so much texture going on here, and I want to capture some of the highlights. So, here we go. I'm going to slap some black paint on this bad boy now. That'll, I'm going to have to let that dry overnight then. That forms the base coat for my oil rub bronze, which is going to allow me to pull out some highlights and make this thing very schnazzy. So, painting black. Okay, so now I'm going to do the oil rub bronze finish. I've got it painted flat black and that's dried. So what I'm gonna do now is paint it with flat leather brown. So it's a fat, flat paint, but it's leather brown. And that gives the kind of the rusty undertones. And I'm just dusting it with that. So I painted the whole thing black yesterday, let that dry. I just painted about 60% of it brown with the dusting, about 60% coverage. Now I'm coming in with my copper paste, a metallic copper paste. Well, by the way, when you're using these cheap one-off paint brushes, always do that, get rid of the extra bristles, at least some of them. And then what I'm going to do is come in with a stippling action and I want to get 50 to 60% coverage this time around. So I'm leaving some of the browns and some of the blacks showing through. And as you do this with the various layers, you just get this multi-layered effect, which is quite aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so the copper is now done. Now we're gonna to move to the bronze, which I'm realizing is pretty much dried up here, scraping the bottom of the barrel quite literally here. So I'm starting with a different brush, and now I'm going to stipple in that, and that, the camera is picking that up right away. You can see adds another whole layer of hue. So contrasting with the copper, we've got now the bronze, and suddenly we get a real richness. I get these pastes from a company that makes them for Venetian plaster, and uh, it's the pigment style they use for that, and it can also be used on metal, but they don't really specifically make it or sell it for metal, but you can. There's a lot of different companies out there that have that. I've just been working with these guys for many years, so I've got my special flavors that I get from them.
Okay, next I'm using stove polish paste, or what I call stove black, which people use on their wood stoves when they get rusty. You can just put this on and it uh, sticks to the rust and it makes it look more blackish. So I'm gonna use this now to shadow things in and just create a little bit more subtlety on this whole thing. Now I know what you're thinking, this thing is about as subtle as David Lee Roth in 1978, but we wanna get a little bit of shadowing, just uh, make the thing a little bit less garish, a little more believable, but I can punch up the shadow a little bit in some of the areas, like the eyes. I'll get my little brush and get some black right in the eye sockets there and just kind of shadow things in the way I want to present this. Moment of truth. So something like that, there we have it. We call this the Pope's candy dish. If I'm imagining in the Vatican there, he, he's got his own little man cave and then has poker night with the boys and then this would be something that he would, uh, have a beer or not. Enjoy yourself, have a beer or not. I'm actually not sure if the current Pope sounds like Bela Lugosi. I think that was the last Pope or the two Popes ago. Anyway. Nonetheless, this thing is done. This was a cool build. I really enjoyed it. As far as a beginner project, other than the skulls, everything is basically simple pieces that are just, there's not a whole lot of expertise required. It's more about creativity and assembly. So it's something that you could probably approach. The crosses are something that I get laser cut. I had them for a specific job and I've got them kicking around. That's something I might actually sell if you're interested, inquire about that. Might be a product that we're gonna start offering and we might start doing more bits and pieces like that for my viewership or for customers in general. In any event, there we have it. I don't know what to even call this thing. It's very gothic. Thanks for tuning in. Back out.